Greetings, family, friends, and survivors. Yep, it's just about sundown for us, which is 3.30 this time of year. I don't need the generator that you hear running in the background. I'm testing. The batteries were clear full at, at noon, and uh, they got a good full charge today and an adequate absorb time. What I'm doing is I'm testing an eight horsepower Predator engine. I bought it for a other another project I'm working on, which I won't need till spring. And what I wanted to do was experiment with running a gas engine at very low RPM and seeing if it would uh, charge the batteries the way I want to. Now I'm still experimenting with a Delco 10SI. I am going to be ordering a Lee Neville 28 volt 130 amp military grade alternator sometime in February likely that will go to 30 volts like I need to with a adjustable voltage regulator. Get it shipped here for between 250 and 300 depending on who you buy it from. But this is all stuff that I have today, stuff I just had laying around. So I found out that when you take a, a Delco 10 SI and there's a what's called a D test port, it's a little cut out on the back of the alternator uh, that's shaped like a D and you look in there's a little spade terminal sticking out as the test port when you ground that terminal out it puts full field on the alternator not a good idea burn up your alternator uh, overvolt your system because it's putting up max volts at that point it's bypass the voltage regulator so what I'm doing is I put a wire on that and brought it out to some resistors and I didn't know what size uh, resistor to get variable resistor until I did some testing so I've tested and proven it today uh, what I need and I'm using water heater um, elements and I found out that 120 volt AC water heater element a 2000 watt is um, 7 ohms and 7 ohms really makes that alternator put out a lot of power and that's going to overvolt things and be an issue. So I said, well, that's good to know. How, what if I put two of these water heater elements in series? So I did that, got 14 ohms. And now with the generator uh, running at 2,000 RPMs and the alternator running at 4,000 RPMs, I went up to see what it would do if I was going to absorb, use the absorb voltage in this application. So since my batteries were at 28 volts when I did the test, because the batteries were full and my float set point on my battery bank's 28, uh, I hooked it up with the automatic regulator working and it was putting in 0.7 amps because the batteries were full. And then I pull the switch, which puts it through the two resistors, uh, the water heater elements, and it went to 12 amps and 30 volts which is perfect for absorb. So now I have a way of manually creating an absorb voltage and current, but also still have the advantage of being able to bulk the batteries um, because the automatic voltage regulator in the alternator still works unless you pull the switch that bypasses it and puts the power to the field through the resistive elements. So I'll show you. Running 7.7. Eight 8.4 amps going in now because the sun has gone down and power is being used in the house. And I'm gonna pull up this switch. the batteries are full, that's climbing up real fast, and it'll come right on up to my absorb voltage. So what this allows me to do is bulk the batteries running a cheap engine at 2000 RPMs 
directly to the batteries without going through the inverter. This is an expensive engine. It's $3,000 and it's running 3600 RPM and it's noisy. So that one over there running at 2000 RPMs uh, and it's an inexpensive motor makes sense. So with the switch down I'm able to uh, use the voltage regulator and it'll bulk the batteries and when the batteries uh, probably get about 95 percent full something like that at 27.3 volts it's just going to back the current way off and sit there and take forever to charge the batteries well i can come out here and pull up that plunger and that'll go ahead and finish the batteries off and that'll take them up to 30 volts at about 12 amps and uh, that'll work for now and when the ohmite uh, 25 ohm 150 watt power resistor gets here i'll leave the switch in the circuit but i'll put the ohmite on the wall and if i come out here and think the current's too high and my volts are creeping up well i just turn the resistor down if i want to default to the the uh, voltage regulator push the switch down if i want to Squeeze a little more in the batteries and get the specific gravity up by increasing the volts. I just pull the little switch up and dial in the rheostat. So this is proving my theory that a 0 to 25 ohm power resistor is the right thing. And this is just a temporary setup. I wouldn't recommend doing it and do any of this at your own risk. I'm not an engineer. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just a guy who's having fun. Trying to share some of it with you. Okay, I've got a box that goes on the wall up here, and it also has got a data logger, digital data, data logger in it with a shunt that records amps in and amps out, volts, high volts, low volts, uh, etc. And uh, that'll help everything out and I'll make it where it's fail safe and then put a voltage disconnect relay in it. So if I'm not here, if I'm doing it in the manually way of putting, uh, raising the absorbed voltage and I have to leave and forget about it, it'll get to maybe 30.5 volts and open circuit and kill the coil on the engine and we're done. All right, just playing around. Have a blessed day.